So here we are at the Angus River catchment and today we're going to be doing um, some monitoring, um, particularly macroinvertebrate monitoring is what I'm going to show you. And it's really important when we do any kind of monitoring that we use a standard technique. And today I'm going to show you the technique that's been used in South Australia for the last 20 years for collecting macroinvertebrates. We're going to need some equipment so as you can see I'm wearing my waders uh, we use this for um, protection when we're walking down to the streams like potentially there's snakes when you're doing this type of work um, also for um, comfort in the water and if the water is not of, of that great water quality then you want to be protected if we're working in water more than 30 centimeters deep uh, then we like to use a life jacket and that just provides us with some extra safety now of course you can't do um, monitoring without catching things. So the next thing we do is we, um, we use a, a macroinvertebrate sampling net. Uh, this is a standard net that we, that we all use, which is um, 30 centimetre D-frame triangular shaped net. Um, and we use that with a 250 micron net, mesh net. And um, that allows us to catch um, even really small critters uh, in the water. Um, it's helpful to have a bucket with you. It's also helpful then if you're potentially transporting your sample um, any distance, you may want to use a Ziploc bag or a sampling container like this. And if samples are being transported, we would preserve them in, um, in ethanol and then take them uh, back to be further processed in the laboratory. Ah, and the white tray, this is what you would put your sample in after you've collected it, especially if you're sorting it in the field. And I'm going to show you that live peak method uh, today. So macroinvertebrates, what we're looking at today, um, they're small creatures, uh, they have no backbone, but they're quite diverse. You may find worms, we may find crustaceans, um, all sorts of other insects as well, perhaps that you've never seen before, uh, like mayflies and stoneflies, um, those type of things all live in the water. Um, some of them have their larval stages in the water um, and then turn into adults in the, in the outside environment. And we also may see dragonfly larvae, um, which do that. While we're doing macroinvertebrate sampling, we're also collecting complementary data. So we want to know about the water quality in which they're living in. So we measure things like DO, pH, salinity, turbidity, temperature, and also we want to take a record of flow, how fast the, the flow is going, um, and also the different substrates that we've done our sample, we've collected our sample from. All of these um, also play an important part in what macroinvertebrates we find and so we want to have that data collected at the same time. So here we are down by the creek and we're about to start undertaking our sampling. Well first of all we actually need to do an assessment of the site and have a look at the different habitats um, that are available to sample. And when we sample we usually sample in two major habitats, one being a pool uh, which is relatively still water uh, and the other being a riffle, um, which we define as having water that's broken or flowing over rocks most commonly. So here we are in the pool habitat and first thing to do is actually look around um, at the different micro habitats that we would find. Now we've got um, quite a lot of fringing vegetation here. We've got some typha reeds um, and we've also got some triglochon that's in the water, water as well. And then you can see on the bottom in the middle of the pool there's also um, some detritus that's fallen from a gum tree and also some rocks. Um, so we want to be able to capture those microhabitats in our 10 metre sweep. The way we measure 10 metres is with our net. So we've got 30 centimetres, 30 centimetres um, and we take three sweeps per metre. So that means that we have a total of 33 sweeps uh, per habitat. And so I'm about, I'm about to um, do some sweeping and you can see that you, you want to find a nice stable spot in the stream and then you, get, you really get your net in, you want to touch the bottom as you're sweeping through the water. So you sample like this into the bank and when you move along there you go, that's, your, um, that's the three, three sweeps, which is probably, so I've got one metre in my net now. And I can already see some macroinvertebrates crawling around in here. So then we'll move on to the next metre. And now I've done two metres. Now over on the other side, there's a more bare bank. So I'm going to actually take some 
some sweeps over here as well. And now I've got three metres in my sample. And as you can see, as I'm taking the sample, I'm gradually walking upstream so that the sample that I'm taking is not being disturbed. So here's a different type of um, water lily and I'm going to take a sample in here. There we go, so now I've got four metres. Now I also want to be able to get some of the rocks that are down here. So I'm going to really vigorously sweep across this rock, getting all the plume that comes up. And there we go, now I've taken five metres. Next habitat is actually in this vegetation here. Uh, so this is another different microhabitat that I'm going to do some sweeps in. I'll take some from each side of the bank. Um, so I'm up, to my, I'm up to five metres at the moment. One, two, three. So that's um, six metres. We'll do some over here. And um, went up to seven metres. We just keep coming up and there's some more, um, you know, different habitats as we keep moving up. So that's eight. And that's nine. We've hit a bit of a silty patch. We've got one more metre to do which we'll come up and do under this um, overhanging log. So an overhang here can also be a really good habitat for things to hide. I've actually seen some little fish um, swimming around in here. So we'll do our last metre here. And there is our macroinvertebrate pool sample. Now what I'll do, we've got some silt in the net, so what I'll do is give it a rinse. Just giving it a really good rinse so that um, it's easier to see in the tray. Some of the really tiny silt comes out um, and that will mean that when we're sorting in the tray um, it won't be uh, too hard to see. So getting your sample into a bag if you're taking it away off the site uh, can be a little bit tricky and so it's probably good to get someone to help you do that. One of the things you want to make sure you've done is you've really rinsed everything down the side of your net and that you've got the sample into a fairly small size. One other little trick that I didn't show you at the beginning is that I always use my net inside out so that the seam is on the outside and that means that the little critters don't get stuck in your seam and it will slip out of your net um, much more cleanly. So then you just grab, you just push it into the net bag. And there you have your sample, all safe and sound in a net bag. Now to get the last little bits out, we're pretty clean with this sample. To get your last little bits out, yeah. shake down your net. Give it an extra wash and then repeat the process. So we're also just going to put a tiny little bit of water into the net bag so that, um, yeah, so that these bugs will be happy while we transport them. And there's your sample. Give your net a really good wash so that it's clean for your next site. Yeah, so I'm just going to collect some water. Um, to take back, uh, to use, to float our sample, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So your sample will either come out of a bag like this, um, or out of a net. And you want to empty it in. And sort of allow it to settle. Now I don't spread out, I don't spread out the mud to start out with. 
um, what I like to do is um, just let just let it be there and we watch and you can see all the things that are swimming around in there things will gradually start to swim out of this and we'll be picking this for the next 40 minutes so we'll get time um, to sort through all of it but what I need to do with this net bag I need to rinse this out and put a little bit more water into my tray okay so we're about to start doing the sorting um, here and I just was going to show you the equipment that we use to do that. Um, so I suppose the first one of the first things is we use is some tweezers. Um, fairly fine point is good because a lot of the bugs are really quite tiny. Um, but that being said, they're so tiny that this is actually probably a, a better thing to be able to collect some of the really tiny things. Now the things that we collect, um, we store them in a, in a jar like this. Um, and that means that anything that we weren't able to identify in the field can be taken back and checked by somebody under a microscope. Uh, now also you've got to remember again to really carefully um, label, label the jar so that it matches the data sheet that you're using. So this is, the, this is the generally the, the book that we use um, for sorting in the field. Uh, we use the water bug book and it's got a really handy key in the front. And the key is the first thing that will take you uh, to what type of creature that you've got. Um, now, in terms of timing our 40 minute pick, uh, you'll need a timer for that. Um, and one of the things that you can obviously use these days uh, is a mobile phone. And so you set that timer for 40 minutes. Okay, so it's really important to record the data of where, we're at, where we are and what the samples um, records are. So here we are at the Angus River. And the date is the 27th of the 4th. 2016. It's also really important to record which habitat that you collected this from. So this was a pool habitat that we just sampled. Now it's good to um, record the observers because if there's something if there's something happens with the sample, um, then you can contact them. So I'm um, Sally Maxwell, um, and then you then we record the time taken to, to process the sample. And we're going to use a minimum of 40 minutes um, picking and looking in the sample. Um, and collecting and identifying as many invertebrates as we possibly can. Uh, you'll be doing this in partnership um, with an expert on the day um, so that you'll be able to, they'll be able to check your identification um, and really record high quality data. Now then your aim is to try and collect as many different species as you possibly can in that time and to also be able to estimate the numbers that you've got in your sample. So for instance I can see some really active things moving around that I'll, that I'll collect first and foremost. So there's a shrimp here. There we go. Now you would, yeah, we would um, collect an example of each of the taxa that we find, but we don't need to collect absolutely everything. We just need to estimate the numbers. So then you would go to your book. Um, you would come up to your, to your key. Um, and the first question, is the animal a pupa? Um, we'd say no, this is, a, this is not a pupa. Uh, and then, or with wings or is clearly, a, is clearly a bug. And then you change and then you follow the key. You follow the key all the way through until it takes you out to your actual specimen. And it comes down here, we've got 10 legs. Um, so this is either a crayfish, a shrimp or a crab. And then it will take you to a specific page in the book to look at it in more detail. And you can see that we've come to the freshwater shrimp page. Now we would actually like to identify this as um, to the lowest taxonomic level possible. Um, so we're going to be able to at least get it to family level by using, by using this book. And your expert might be able to help you to go even further with your identification with that. So quite a lot of the invertebrates that you find are going to be really quite small. We looked at a, a, a shrimp before and that's quite large. Um, this is a coronamid, this is a fly larvae. Um, and that's still actually quite large. Um, some, of the, some of the bugs in this sample will be even smaller than that. Um, so attention to detail and really um, looking carefully at your sample. Um, looking at how the different critters move can also be a really good way um, of being able to pick up all the different ones in your sample. So in terms of, a, in terms of our sampling and in terms of estimating the abundance in the, in the sample, this is a, only a semi-quantitative method. And so what we, what we do is we're, we're giving a broad estimate of numbers. Um, we're not getting an absolute accurate number. 
Um, if you've only got one in a sample, that's easy. You'll just um, record one. But otherwise, we record them in categories um, between 2 to 10, um, between 11 and 100, 100 plus, and then 1,000 plus, um, if you've got lots of the same um, creatures swimming around. Like, and in this sample, I can see that I have got um, lots of isopods swimming around in here. So I would say and give an estimate that we probably have, we, we definitely have more than 100, um, probably not up to 1,000, but definitely more than 100 um, in this sample. So it just gives us an indication of the numbers relative to each other. So as we're going, as we, as we collect our bugs and we identify them, we record them um, on, on the data sheet. Now, another really important thing to do at the end of your picking is to look at what's stuck on the bottom of the tray. Uh, a lot of macroinvertebrates have adaptations so that they can stick to rocks and they'll do exactly that to the bottom of the tray. You'll find that macroinvertebrates are really clever at hiding. Um, and so you'll find them in all sorts of different, in different spaces in your tray. One of the things that they like to do is to burrow into sticks. And um, so you might all of a sudden be looking at your tray and you see a, a, a stick walking. And it's really, um, you've really got to be uh, watching for those type of things um, so that we, we get all the taxa that are in the tray. So it takes a little bit of practice, but um, yeah, after a while, it's pretty cool to see little sticks walking around in your tray. You pick them up and you find um, things like caddisflies living in them. Um, you also might find some that live in uh, stones and rocks or have built their, their cases out of stones and rocks and they've spun them with silk to put those little cases together. Okay, so my timer has gone off um, and then I need to be aware, did I find any new taxa in the, or species in the last five minutes? Um, and if the answer is no, then the sampling is finished and we stop. Um, if the answer is yes, then you set the timer and you continue on for another five minutes. Um, and again, if you find no species then, then you stop and if you do, you continue for another five minutes. And you continue that up to 60 minutes. 60 minutes is the maximum for the sample. Okay, so now we're going to sample the riffle habitat um, and you can see that this is where uh, the water is rippling over the rocks um, and where we're going to get different habitats here and different macroinvertebrates. Uh, flow is a really important determinant of what little critters that we find. So this sampling method is a little bit different. Um, what we, we again start from downstream and we put our net in but we also need to get into the stream here and we use our feet uh, to be able to Scratch the rocks and then you're collecting the plume from what you've scratched. So you're just, you're just scrubbing with your feet and you're doing it to the width, net, width of the net and then the flow of the water pushes the, um, pushes the sample and the critters that you scrub off into the net. And again you do this um, for 10 linear metres in a riffle and as you can see we've got a sample happening. That's one metre out of a 10 metre sample. So we'll, we'll probably, I know there's more riffle at this site, so we'll do a patch here and a patch further upstream. So here we are, we've finished our sampling today. We've collected from pool and riffle habitat. Uh, we've collected our samples, we've recorded them. Um, we're going to take those samples away for any further identification that's needed. Um, and those data will be stored and we'll then um, use that data to assess how this, how this site is going and how it is responding to changed management actions that we plan to do in the catchment. Mm -hmm.